What is going on, fifth grade? What's going on? Welcome, welcome. We are on day one, a 10 mile day. I'm going to be covering the vocabulary skill. But before we do anything, I've got a little story to read y'all. Please remember, when I go through this story, as we are listening, please remember that there are several words I'm going to be stopping on to go over. We're going to use context clues to figure out the meaning of these words. But I do want you to remember, these are just amazing words. Later on in this video, we're going to focus on our two vocab words for today, barren and deafening. And then, we're in our day. So, here we go. The story for today is called Journey to Ellis Island by Carol Bierman. Carol, let's see what she's got for us. In September of 1922, Yehuda Weinstein and his family moved from Russia to America to join his older brother, Abe. This passage describes what it was like to wait at Ellis Island before being called by immigration officials. So immigration, that's one word. Immigration. So keep that in mind. The next morning, the Weinsteins were taken to the main building on Ellis Island. Second thing. Ellis Island. We're going to come back to what that is in a minute, but note that is where this is taking place. Yehuda and Esther thought it looked like a castle with its massive red brick walls edged in white stone and its four tall towers. America must be a really rich country if they have such a beautiful building just for people coming here, Yehuda exclaimed. Rachel nodded, but she was too nervous to answer. They struggled up the staircase to the huge registry room. With all the bags they held and they carried, it was very heavy for them to get up the stairs. Yehuda had never been in a room so large before. There were rows and rows of wooden benches crowded with men, women, and children. And then every one of them had their bundle of belongings right at their feet. Belongings. Another one. The hall was hot and stuffy, and it echoed with noise, babies crying, and people talking anxiously to each other in many different languages and as well as officials, employees, calling us out, um, calling out names, and calling us eventually. The Weinsteins sat on a bench to wait. Esther curled up against Rachel and soon fell asleep. Yehuda saw a man approaching them with a big bucket filled with milk and a basket of long yellow fruit. Long yellow fruit, I wonder what that could be. He was stopping at every child, giving each one a cup of milk and one of the strange pieces of fruit. Yehuda watched as one boy bit right into the yellow skin and then made a face and spit it out. Then he saw someone pull the skin down in strips and eat the soft white fruit inside. Yehuda smiled to herself. Every day in America, he was learning something new. So bananas, they must not have, they must come from somewhere that doesn't have bananas. So this is the first time them seeing what bananas are, which, you know, good on them. Bananas are awesome. So continuing, when the man reached Yehuda, he gave him a banana and one to save for Esther. Yehuda, Yehuda ate his banana hungrily and gulped down the warm milk. But he was still thirsty. He noticed that the man with the bucket had moved on a few rows and was still giving out milk. Yehuda quietly slipped away from his mother's side and took a seat in a row that the man had not yet reached. When the man came to Yehuda, he hardly glanced up and the boy got another drink of delicious milk. Yehuda moved on a few rows to try his luck again, but this time the man looked closely at him and says, Hey, wait a minute. Didn't I give you some before? Yehuda understood the, man, the man's tone of voice and shook his head nervously. It was you, all right, the man wagged his finger at Yehuda. You can't fool me, son. No more milk for you. Yehuda returned to his mother's side with the milk and bananas man's stern eyes watching him all the way. So, that story was just a little account of what it is like to be what is called an immigrant. An immigrant, kind of going with our word that I said before, immigration. If you are immigration, is the idea of moving. If you are an immigrant, you are one that moves. So next, Ellis Island. Ellis Island, for the longest time, was a place where people that came to America would go first to be registered and eventually, of course, allowed into America, if they were allowed. Next, we have belongings. Belongings, kind of like the word belong, going with it, is something that is supposed to stay with you, something that you own. My belongings on me, I've got a pair of keys, I've got my wallet, and my phone is the thing I'm filming on, but that would also be my belonging. Oh, and uh, I apparently have a quarter, so there you go, those are my belongings. And then anxiously, I didn't really stop with that one, but anxiously means you're not, and not, again, that's anxiously. That is a word that kind of just means you're <clears throat> uncertain of things. You don't know how to think about something. What makes me really anxious is being on the road and I see a truck that's going really fast or a really low-riding, speedy car like a Mustang. Those things make me anxious because I don't know what they're going to do. They don't usually use their blinkers because they don't got time for that, and they go really fast. So that's our story. That's Journey to Ellis Island. Now, last thing, we have two vocab words we're looking at today. The first one being barren, and the second one being deafening. I'm going to start with barren. Now, barren means, essentially, it's a place or a state. I don't mean state like Alabama. I mean, like almost like a status on Facebook. 
It's a place or status of not being able to grow or sustain life. So let's shorten that. So, unable to hold slash keep life. Now, a lot of people like to use the word desert, you know, dry, dry place as an example. Even though if you go to a desert, you'll soon learn that there are a lot of creatures that live in the desert, but you could, you could use that. So like maybe a barren wasteland where the ground is really cracked and dry and nothing lives in there at all. So it's a place that just can't sustain life. A lot of the planets in space are like this that we know of, where it's so hot or so dry that there really isn't any life. It's just a big landmass. So that's barren when you really try. Now, definite. Bah! Notice, I just yelled. It was really loud. I even hurt my own ears. Deafening is essentially a word that means something that's so loud it makes your ears hurt. So me yelling is probably not the best example. A good example would be you're on the side of the road and you're walking, and then a dump truck or a really big semi truck or even really or even worse, one of those 18 wheeler trucks comes right next to you and you hear that roar of the engine and the clankety clank of the trailer behind it, that would be deafening. It hurts your ears, you're like, ow. Or if you have headphones in and you turn up the volume way too loud by accident, ooh, yeah, that would really hurt. So, really loud hurts ears. I know I'm not using complete sentences, but I'm not really worried about that. I'm mainly worried about you understanding. So, to go back over before we uh, quit for today, Baron is unable to hold or keep life while the deafening is going to be really loud, hurts one ear. So, why? Someone yells right in your ears. Or, don't do this, kids, but whenever someone accidentally hits, or on purpose if they're being a jerk, if someone accidentally hits your ears, that's really loud. And you're like, ah, it hurts. It's really, really loud noise. Well, guys, this has been day one of vocab. Hope we're having a great day today. Uh, it is Friday, so I know we're all really happy to get the weekend. I know I am. I hope you guys keep it safe out there, and I will see you in the next video. Toodaloo.